What are the key components uh, of speed development for NRL athletes? I think the the main thing that um, often gets overlooked is actually sprinting. Like that's primarily going to be the thing that makes an athlete fast is is practicing the the task itself. Um, once you get that in place, then it becomes about having a systemized approach to develop all the key um, components that underpin running competency. So the running skill itself. Um, and those are going to be things like lumbar pelvic control, um, leg stiffness, the uh, ability to switch the limbs rapidly in space. Um, those are sort of going to underpin your, your speed uh, qualities. And then beneath that, you've got like a foundation that's built on sort of your secondary and tertiary training methods that target your leg power. And what are some key things that you sort of take into account when you're assessing an athlete um, and what type of program to give them and how important speed is in terms of like things like positions they play and their age and um, yeah, their physical qualities? Yeah, so we've got a pretty thorough like standardised testing um, battery that we take the athletes through. And for each of those tests, we have benchmarks that are position specific. Um, so talking about some of those like secondary and tertiary training qualities, we're going to assess the athlete's lower body strength. So that can be um, via isometric mid-thigh pull or through a back squat, 1RM. We look at their leg power with a, with a jump shrug and a counter movement jump. We look at leg stiffness with um, drop jump testing. And then we also look at their mobility um, with table testing and, and some screening that we, we can do, like a, a cap stretch against the wall, things like that. For those that aren't uh, working in an elite program, what do you think would be some common mistakes that um, athletes are work, you know, commonly making when they're trying to improve their speed by themselves, perhaps? <clears throat> yes, um, there's probably a few things. Um, the first is uh, a lack of... Uh, intensity in their sprint efforts and that's usually a consequence of insufficient recovery so um, if you're trying to develop your speed and you're doing three four five six 40 meter sprints for instance on just a walk back recovery from rep three onwards you're going to have so much fatigue in the system that you're just not going to be able to generate the outputs that um, drive the adaptations that you're looking for so making sure you've got enough recovery between efforts is really important. Um, I'd also say that for the most part, uh, athletes don't really know how to organise a speed session. What were some sort of standout um, learnings in terms of what a successful speed session looks like, I guess, from a strength and conditioning point of view, uh, for, for those listening that may not have seen a, a track and field session or a speed session done in a lead environment? Uh, so what are your big rocks, I guess, when going into planning one? Yeah, it's definitely evolved over the years for me. Um, the way I tend to organise it now is we will take um, a good 10 to 15 minutes to do some um, low-level prep before we even go out on the field. In that time, we'll be doing targeted mobility work, um, getting the hips nice and mobile. Um, we'll, we'll be um, doing some activation exercises that are targeting the lumbo-pelvic region. So... Um, having good control of the pelvis, um, good trunk integrity. Um, and then we'll also just do some g general sort of dynamic movements to raise the body temperature and things like that, get blood flowing. And for those that are uh, injured athletes um, and perhaps aren't able to sprint at the current stage of their rehab, what are some good sort of supplementary exercises or drills that you like to do either on the field or in the gym um, so that when they're ready to integrate into sprinting, they're, they're robust enough? Um, well, it's actually, it's quite a complicated question because it can depend on specifically what the injury is that we're dealing with. Um, I like to try and use drilling as much as I can to fill the gaps in what they can't do from a sprinting perspective. So, um, for instance, if we're dealing with, um, let's say a hamstring injury, um, the athlete will still be able to do a lot of high intensity drilling, get a lot of high quality ground contacts, get that calf ankle foot complex loaded in a similar way that we would um, to, to sprinting as per normal. Um, we can also do a fair bit of change of direction work with a hamstring injury um, because the hamstring isn't going to be fully activated until you've got sort of um, higher velocities or a lot of intent behind a linear acceleration.